pioneers in innovation, unique in every action. Welcome to the Game Changers on our television. Today's Game Changer is an individual who changed and introduced many aspects which would lead to take our business world to the next level. Introducing an IT college back then in 2000 and today it has reached more than 40, 40 IT institutes across the country. Introducing to you today's Game Changer, Founder, Managing Director of Ease of Group, Dr. Diane Rajapaksha. Welcome to the show, Dr. Diane. Sri Lanka needs 360,000 ICT workforce by 2022. Your thoughts on this, Doctor? Yeah, actually, uh, uh, these, this figure uh, basically based on various uh, uh, workforce surveys that are done in the country. So as all of us know that the IT industry is growing ra very rapidly. A lot of new companies, existing companies are increasing their number of uh, employees. Uh, new startup companies are coming up and uh, that is the growth, of the growth in the industry. Then on the other hand, uh, IT is becoming a part of uh, every sector, manufacturing to uh, retail to you know, finance. Any institution has to uh, use IT for the innovating and improving their services. So because of this, actually, all these organizations uh, require IT professionals. So uh, you thought about this uh, 17 years ago? That's where you placed uh, your first campus? Uh, yeah, actually we saw that trend uh, from uh, you know uh, early 80s uh, with the introduction of personal computers into the market, right? Sri Lanka was a bit late, but however we, we also felt that in the 90s uh, IT is going to change, uh, affect us uh, in a big way. Uh, before coming into the IT world, let's have a major throwback to your childhood doctor. How was it all about? How interesting was it? Actually, I, uh, my hometown is Naramma, that is uh, in Kurnagala district. So, uh, uh, me and my two, two sisters, we were schooling uh, in leading schools in Kurnagala. I, was, uh, I studied at Malidev College. So, my childhood actually uh, was very interesting. We had time to play, we do sports, and also a lot of uh, extracurricular activities while studying. I played for the Western Band, I did swimming in school. And I was the house captain uh, in school uh, when I was in my year, year 12. But still, you know, I was having my uh, focus on my studies too. So I think um, it was an enjoyable time. We, we can recall our memories in the past. Uh, there's love, uh, you know, uh, uh, interesting stuff. A uh, lot of friends uh, at school time and a lot of friends from Hill Village. Uh, so it was, it was a you know, great experience. I, I, I always uh, can recall and be happy about it. A bit about your school life. Uh, were you a, a mischievous kid at school? Uh, I was not. That's two years. But uh, until I did my O-levels, I uh, when I got my O-level results, I had the best result. Uh, not not the best result in school, but I, I got. Uh, we had only six subjects, so I got six Ds. So after that only I was a little, you know, uh, interested about studies because I thought I have a capacity and then I should be a little focused. Uh, a bit about your university entrance. Uh, you had a district rank or something? Yeah, I, uh, I, I was actually, in, uh, because of the district rank only, I was able to uh, come into the University of uh, Colombo because usually from Kurunayagala, most of the people who get selected to medicine, they don't get the uh, first choice to come to Colombo. They have to study in Peradene. But whereas I came on all island merit basis, so that is how I was entered into the University of Colombo for doing medicine. How interesting was your study, stay at uh, the University of Colombo? Uh, it was a totally, you know, uh, different experience because then uh, in my, my, my campus, actually, Faculty of Medicine, uh, we had uh, probably more than uh, 190 batch, about 120 from Colombo leading schools. So then I, I uh, was, was able to mingle with uh, different people coming from different backgrounds from all parts of the country, different communities. Interesting. Yo, what was your childhood ambition? You wanted to be a doctor from then? Actually, I, I was not too quite sure what I wanted to be, uh, but you know, my father was a doctor, so I wanted to be a good professional. Uh, 
but in my childhood I didn't I didn't have an idea of becoming an entrepreneur or businessman uh, that that's a, a idea that got planted later uh, but in childhood I wanted to be qualified uh, I wanted to be a professional actually I prefer uh, to become an engineer because I was very good in uh, maths but, but only thing is you know in Sri Lankan context parents uh, have a little bit influence on your decisions and my father uh, was not really happy uh, me uh, sitting in the maths class so I had to I had to really uh, you know change my uh, that idea and you know uh, went on to, uh, to do bioscience and become the doctor uh, till that point uh, IT was not there in your no I had actually because uh, after my O levels uh, there was a little bit of delay in starting A levels that during that time so because of that, anyway, as a second option, my father wanted me to, uh, you know, do IT because we were not too sure whether the education system would get disrupted. You know, what are the alternatives? As a, actually, as a contingency plan only, I started doing IT. So, but still, uh, after finishing that, I, I concentrated on what I was doing, which is bioscience, and got selected to the medical college. Your childhood influences uh, to who you are today. Yeah, actually, I, I, one of my role models is my father. Uh, he was, uh, he's a GP, uh, general practitioner, practicing in my hometown. Uh, what I liked about him is his charisma. Right. He, uh, he's very straightforward, he has very, very high uh, personal integrity, uh, and also he's a perfectionist. Whenever he starts some job, whether it is you know, working in the hospital, uh, clinic or matter uh, at household, he, he wants to make sure it's done perfectly, it's done uh, to completion, he never stops something halfway. Uh, so that is something that I always liked and I, I still, in my practice, in my work too, I, I never finish something. Uh, I, without finishing, I will not stop it. You didn't have to look far from home uh, for inspiration, you had your father. Uh, yeah, the, that was a great asset actually. So when you have someone very close to you, uh, which you can, which can be your role model, uh, that's that's a great asset for you. IT started blooming, if I'm not mistaken, in your era. Uh, like, did you have any plans when you started your BCS uh, back then? No, actually, that was uh, I didn't have any plans of becoming uh, you know IT practitioner when I started BCS but I just did it, did it as an added qualification. Today we see it uh, like in most of our students like they focus in one area only if it is uh, if it is bioscience they are into that sector only if it is business management they don't look at IT yeah. so they don't they lack uh, the skill of multitasking when it comes to the business world so your thought on this doctor yeah, actually it's a very uh, negative uh, approach uh, because you know we don't we never know what are going to be your opportunities in the future i cannot predict what is going to be uh, more demanding in 2020 or 2030 uh, things are changing so fast our predictions will, will you know easily get changed so i think it is always good to be armed with you know multiple skills right uh, if you if you are qualified and if you have talents and skills it doesn't need to be paper qualifications if you can have competencies uh, uh, like for example skills that you acquire will uh, definitely will help you to be more uh, you know uh, adaptable flexible uh, and uh, get uh, your opportunities uh, more in your corporate in the corporate world you continued your higher education uh, in the University of Colombo biomedical science yeah. so uh, where did this switch come uh, into play to start up uh, a business school uh, a IT school actually I, I was a part-time lecturer when I was doing uh, medicine because I had completed my BCS uh, when I just started the medical school uh, work. Uh, during the first year itself, I, I completed the BCS professional exams. So I was a prof qualified IT professional when I started my medical undergraduate uh, degree. That gave me a, an opportunity for me to share my knowledge in private colleges, becoming an IT lecturer. So the entire five year, five and a half years university life, I, I, for my pocket money, I was doing lectures. So then, uh, and the, the best thing is that a lot of student, uh, students actually like my teaching style. I, I was teaching uh, using my intellects as well as from my heart. So uh, the response that I got from the students, uh, that was amazing. Uh, they talked about me, they uh, associated me, that gave, they gave very positive feedback. 
and that is what the way I thought you know uh, I might have a talent I might have an opportunity of starting an IT uh, school that's what motivated you yeah, that, that the... as do you have a role model in your life, Doc? Actually, in the uh, after becoming an entrepreneur, uh, I I had a role model which is uh, Steve Jobs, especially uh, who made a uh, significant change to the IT world. Uh, I liked his uh, resilience. Right? Uh, failures were very common in his life, but he had uh, the the courage to uh, face those difficulties and come back. Uh, so, uh, as a businessman, uh, I actually uh, like his story uh, and I, there are a lot to take from his story. Uh, and then um, I, I also like innovation. I like to do things uh, different and uh, I don't like, even in the business world, even if I'm diversifying, I like to enter into a blue ocean rather than a red ocean. He says, stay hungry, stay foolish. So, your, your view on this, though? Um, uh, actually, uh, you, you have to think in an open mind, uh, right? If you if you do your basics uh, uh, right, uh, you, 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 the opportunity will uh, turn to you, right? And then uh, you you can get your uh, vision uh, in the right direction and move forward. What are your hobbies and passion? Though? One one passion is actually IT. I am passionate about IT, and I'm uh, passionate about uh, the innovation that brings uh, to life with IT. Then uh, my hobbies are uh, I like cycling. Uh, I do cycling, and then photography, which is especially wildlife photography, and also a little bit of swimming. All right. Uh, do you like uh, engage in uh, partying or something? Sorry, you, you yeah, like yeah. to dance? Yeah, I, I do like uh, dancing <laughs> uh, because uh, you know that is fun. Uh, when you meet up with people, uh, you need to enjoy yourself, be relaxed. Uh, you know, uh, life is not all about you know doing business and uh, uh, achieving goals. You need to associate people. You need to uh, meet with them. Still, actually, I have uh, you know so many friends from different different backgrounds. My school friends, my village friends. Uh, friends from the medical fraternity, uh, IT friends, I worked in IT companies, so a lot. Doctor, your entrance to the business world, how does the journey begin back then? I started this business at a very tough time in my life. That is during the time then uh, I was doing internship uh, in my medical career, which is the hardest time uh, in a medical profession because it's your first job. But then I, uh, I got an opportunity, an idea. No, it was not only me, actually. There were about another three or four uh, friends of mine joined with me when starting uh, ESOP way back in 2000. So that is, uh, we, we had a, you know, initial brainstorming sessions and how we want this company to be taken forward. Uh, and where, uh, where was the first uh, ESOP? First uh, center was started in Kirlapana, uh, not in the current place where we are now operating from Colombo 4. Actually, uh, at one time, after two years, we moved from Kirlapana uh, to uh, Colombo 4. All right, so it started very small. How many students you all had? Uh, at Actually, the I had only three staff members. So in my very first class, I remember I was lecturing for four students. That is how I started, in a very small building. Uh, we probably, maybe less than 2,000 square feet. Uh, it's all a very, big very brands, humble beginning. Yeah. All big brands have a story like that, even yeah. Coca-Cola. They sold only 25 bottles in their first year. So, uh, like, uh, can you talk about it a bit more, Doctor? Because a lot of people start, up, start their businesses and close down within one year or one and a half years. They don't, they don't hold on. You yeah. don't get results at the very beginning. Yeah. Your, your thoughts on this? Yeah, that is quite exactly. Uh, because some people start businesses. My concept is you think big, start small. My, I, I, I didn't want to you know, just uh, run the company with four students. I had a big idea, I had a lot of big dreams. But then I started it very small. Uh, alternatively, some people started very big. And then your OHs are high at the beginning. And that is where you can, will not be able to sustain. When you start small, uh, actually I was able to manage uh, to run this business with the salary that I earned as a doctor and a, with a few uh, thousand rupee income uh, from the students, I was able to break even. So that is, that is how it was started. So I was able to you know, tolerate uh, poor results, poor uh, uh, you know, performance, even for a longer time. Think big, start small, says Dr. Dayan Rajapaksha. Let's go to a short commercial break and come back soon.
Welcome back. You're watching the Game Changers on our television. Today's Game Changer is Dr. Dayan Rajapaksha, Founder, Managing Director, eSoft Group. How was eSoft back then in 2000, Doctor? Like, uh, what did you all offer at the very beginning? Actually, more than products, I, w I was selling uh, an idea, a, a concept, because I had a dream for the youth of this country. I had a dream for the IT industry. That is how I built up my organization. Why I branched out to all parts of the corners is I wanted to, be, I wanted to you know, get everyone engaged rather than just you know, running a center in Colombo. Uh, so still my dream is not fully realized. Uh, if Sri Lanka becomes uh, you know, probably earning about five billion uh, US dollars per annum from the IT industry, that is where I want, I think our capacity is. So we, we, are, we are actually uh, brand, we branded eSoft uh, in that way. It is a solution for your, the youth of the country rather than just you know, a one or two products. So we changed the products, uh, introduced new products, came up with new ideas just to you know, uh, take, uh, continue our journey. Still we are doing that. How did the brand eSoft come up? Uh, there was no uh, uh, special reason, you know, it's just a name, you know, uh, it's, it's about, you know, software and electronics and technology, so because of that we just used some innovative name, uh, eSoft. Alright, uh, what are the challenges uh, you faced when you, when you, when you, like, introduced this at the very beginning? You know, uh, you might have a lot of challenges, but uh, something yeah. our viewers would love to listen yeah. to. One of the major challenge was, uh, you know, capital for any entrepreneur uh, starting from uh, from the grassroots level uh, you have limitations of capital today still today i have limitations of capital all what i wanted to do i cannot do uh, because i have limited uh, funds investment capacity that's something uh, interesting doctor can you like stress on uh, in finding out capital yeah. for entrepreneurs because a lot of youth today they have fantastic ideas out there but uh, the basics yeah actually uh, you know, in, in early stage in your career, banks are even won't support you, right? Uh, I had difficulties at that time. So, best thing is to start up with a small capital. IT, for an IT company, you don't need to have a very big uh, capital. For example, uh, you, can, you can start uh, an IT company uh, in, your, in your home, your own room. Just a couple of pieces, a few of your friends can work together. And you work uh, without looking demanding, you, you use your capacity and work, so then you don't have very high payroll. Uh, you know, uh, I, I would like to share uh, for the youngsters, uh, more than you know, 10 big IT companies were started in US in garages. Right? Uh, so for example, even Apple uh, was started in a uh, garage, Google started in a garage. Right? So they basically they are not looking for comforts initially, they are not looking for fashionable offices, just a basic environment where you can engage and do your work. What is it uh, really like to be a lecturer in your own business, like does it, does it give the insight, like the, the feel uh, what the students really acquire and you, you provide them? Yeah, that is a secondary benefit because when I do lecture, I, I get first-hand information. I meet the students, I, I, I understand their you know, problems, uh, maybe uh, grievances, what they have and what, how we need to change, even change our curriculums and things like that. I can get that idea when I'm, I'm a lecturer. Other thing is actually I, I love lecturing. I like sharing my knowledge, I sharing my experience and so on. So therefore I, I will not give up lecturing. That's interesting. Have you reached the ultimate of your vision? Uh, anything new coming up? Still not, actually. Uh, you know, life is a journey. So you, you have goals and you have more goals. So my journey still continues. I have, uh, I have come to a certain level, but that's not the ultimate point I want to be in. I have some further ideas. I told you I, I'm seeing a dream from the youth of this country. I, I want to really uh, do something for the for the youngsters in the country. That is, you know, uh, from kindergarten, I want to uh, give technology education to these people. At the moment, my uh, setup uh, at the moment is only for school leavers. So we are not doing something for uh, the children who are school going children at the moment. I'm going to start up a new company in, very so in, the, in the near future to, uh, uh, you know, serve them. Because I think that is where we need to uh, you know, put our focus. 
uh, IT is something that you can give it to a very young person at a very early age. They adopt it very they, soon. They, they learn very fast and they will do wonders. Uh, latest introduction uh, from eSoft is the Leap Foundation. Um, it's it's uh, like our viewers would love to listen. They see Leap uh, all around, yeah. but uh, the real... What is the idea? Yeah, yeah. yeah idea Actually, uh, this is also came up, uh, not because I thought about some product and so on. This is came, came up uh, because of a problem that I saw uh, when I offer IT services, education services in the country. We have a lot of intelligent students sometimes who miss the university because their level results are not that good, uh, but they, ha they have the capacity to uh, become useful uh, professionals uh, who can serve to the country. But investment capacity was not there. So that is why I thought of introducing a program called Learn, Earn and Pay. So in, you know, in my, my opinion, people should be ready to um, take take challenges, ready to make sacrifices, uh, because if you, if you can, in IT you can find little, little odd jobs uh, and earn something and pay for your uh, education. But you will have to, you know, uh, make a little bit of sacrifices, right? You will have to probably study at weekend, work during the weekdays. So that is how you can uh, start a new journey and uh, change your life change your uh, family's uh, prospects. Doctor, when it comes to LEAP, uh, do you all find them jobs as well? Yeah, that's what our uh, objective here. Uh, we recruit the students first because we can't find them job without having any competencies. We, co employers are not looking for paper qualification, they're looking for competencies. So what we will do is we recruit intelligent, capable students who are willing to undergo, through, undergo this process and we expose them to potential employers. Already we have discussed with some employers. Some employers actually gave the idea to us. They want some people like this. So uh, at different stages, these students will be uh, exposed to potential employers. They will come and do interview these students and see whether they have the right capabilities which the employer want. It can be as early as, you know, just after joining three months, just, just after three months of joining. Or it can be maybe after six months, after one year. You'll be so, giving a basic knowledge. Yeah, for that we'll six be months. giving a basic knowledge, and we will sometimes uh, customize our training to match the employer's requirements and give them the skills uh, what employer demands as early as possible, so that they get placed in a company. So uh, this process, uh, how long does it take? So basically, the uh, the learning period is three years, but if sometimes the employer demands that you can continuously study. You'll have to probably, you know, study for two years, then take a break and study another one year. It might take four years. But repayment plan, you study for three years, but the repayment plan goes up to about uh, five years. So without a bank loan, uh, we give a repayment plan of five years. That is also to bring down the monthly uh, installment. So that will be more affordable. So this, you've, you've taken this across the country. So yeah. How is the feedback of it? Uh, very good feedback actually I, I know that this solves the problem of many people it solves the problem uh, of parents uh, not being able to you know finance for their education it gives a solution to the youth of the country they can realize their dreams becoming qualified people and also it uh, it uh, gives a solution to potential employers because sometimes the employers fi uh, find it difficult to find the right talents that they want so the challenges, uh, we spoke about your challenges in bringing up the brand uh, eSoft up, but how did you make people trust in you? Because uh, when it comes to uh, private education in Sri Lanka, they think twice before they enroll. Yeah. So how did you manage to build that trust? Uh, it's all, uh, all based on what we, what we have offered them. We have changed the lives of many people in the country. I, now I am really happy, you know, my students when I go uh, overseas, they work in foreign companies, they are migrated and they are doing well. Some people have started their own companies in Sri Lanka. So uh, that is actually more than, I mean, that is real proof of what we had done. That is how uh, our trust has built up to this level. So it, this trust is not the same uh, when, when I started. Just after three years of, after I started, I didn't have the same trust. Because when you put more and more people, uh, more, more lives have been changed, more people realize their dreams through our education system, then the word of mouth, it spreads. It's uh, word of mouth which uh, took, yeah, which made up to, people. up to this level. We do, we do run commercials and all that is there, but only thing ultimately, 
how, to what extent people trust us depends on how we have changed and how, how we have solved their problems. That's interesting. Uh, what do you think the country, uh, country, ne country needs right now in terms of IT? Are we, are we already there or we are still coming up the curve? No, actually we are not already there because uh, we just reached 1 billion uh, US dollar foreign uh, earning uh, last year. So, which is not, not where we can be. Uh, when you look at our neighbor like India, they have gone uh, much to much higher heights than us. So, we, I think we have a better potential. We are a smaller country, we have more intelligent people, capable people, our language proficiency is good. So I think uh, this is not the ultimate level. I, I, I believe the way to move forward is the people who go to the industry with experience, they should take risk and they should uh, start on their own, own uh, companies. For example, startup companies. If 1,000 people, 2,000 people, mm. let's say 5,000 people start up new companies, then we, the industry will get a boom. All right, so ease of, is like, Getting into other other qualifications or like starting to offer other qualifications like business management, hospitality, why is that? As I told you, you know, we don't sell a product. We sell an idea and a concept. My uh, concept is giving opportunities to the youth in this country. So where the demands are coming, uh, we offer uh, them through our education system. Why hospitality? Because you know we have a boom in tourism in the country. I know you, you can see the number of uh, uh, you know hotels and other properties coming up here. Do we have uh, the workforce needed for these people uh, to to run these institutions? I don't think. I mean, if you do not get our youth qualified in these areas, we will have to import people. Why don't? Why we want to you know give opportunities to the people in other countries when we have a lot of youngsters here? Definitely. Uh, your views on the tourism industry, uh, as you said, uh, you see a lot of hotels coming up. Uh, are we Sri Lankans uh, exp like giving giving the real touch and feel for tourism? Uh, not the, because in terms of our marketing, uh, we are still not strong. Because if you see our neighboring countries, they give a lot of package solutions. People can you know choose them easily. They made it very very convenient. Uh, for you to travel in those countries. I think we have not come up to that particular level. We are blessed so, with natural beauty, but we, yeah, don't. we, we don't sell it. We don't sell it uh, uh, like the other people because it's all about competition. Right? Sri Lanka is not the only uh, travel destination a traveler is having. There are so many options. So if you have uh, people compare, what it, is their value for money? Is their convenience? Is their comfort? Are there luxuries? Can, can we uh, do our hobbies in this country? We, we have to so offer these solutions to the people. I have a travel company also in my group. We are, we are into online uh, travel business. Because I think uh, through, uh, through social media and online uh, media, our tourism can be taken to a different uh, level. That's something interesting uh, that I didn't know about, but yeah. uh, you have, you have, uh, we have merged. A company, yeah, we have a company called Ibo Leisure, which is actually has built up, built up a portal, which is a unique portal, where you can plan your entire travel itinerary uh, if you are traveling in Sri Lanka. From transport to hotel accommodation to sightseeing, you can do uh, you know, from this one. That would be a perfect, uh, perfect thing to look up to, like to our youth uh, in the country. Can you yeah. talk about a bit more, doctor? Because uh, how you've taken uh, the travel industry, like merging it with your technology. Co yeah. Yeah. So a bit about that. Yeah. So uh, what what I have done is uh, uh, using technology to promote Sri Lankan tourism. So uh, on our portal, anyone can partner. If you are a tra transport company, your services can be offered through us. If you are uh, doing sightseeing, say whale watching or wildlife in the country, you can be part of our portal. So I want to, you know, give the international exposure to local brands. Oh, that's becoming, the, the, the talk is becoming even more interesting right now. But uh, we have to go to a short commercial break. Uh, let's go to a short commercial break and come back soon. Welcome back. You're watching the Game Changers on our television. 
doctor uh, your views about the current education system in sri lanka uh, i think uh, we need to change uh, quite a lot in that because uh, we know we have a traditional education system which we have been running from the 60s 70s onwards i guess so uh, uh, and I, i believe we try to teach a lot but now today uh, people don't teach that much you make the students learn so i, I think uh, we are more exam oriented uh, which is actually creating a lot of stress uh, to some students even the real talent doesn't come out uh, at these exams i think we we need to look at conceptually on these matters and bring some big changes uh, learning rather than teaching Uh, maybe assessments and continuous uh, assessment rather than just one exams doctor when it comes to our middle school education system uh, they it's it's wide yeah. there are a lot of uh, like 8 to 11 subjects they yeah. teach a little yeah. kid yeah. but when it uh, when we look at a country like new zealand yeah. when a kid loves to play rugby he is 100% educated about rugby and sports science yes. but why can't we adopt to that system that's what i think system need changes because we don't have flexibility in our education people have to just you know everyone has to learn the same thing and for example if you take up to all of us everyone every student in this country learns the same thing except for few subjects you just you know take as extra uh, subjects otherwise the core elements are uh, same you think that uh, system that i mentioned yeah, is it, ideal it's modular it's ideal ideal actually you give some basic uh, knowledge i think as you say it's too many subjects we give too much of subjects so ultimately you know people do not learn the basic life skills i i don't see in our education system giving basic life skills which everyone needs that need to be part of uh, the uh, the training and then let them uh, choose their own areas and uh, pursue uh, on that line so modular system uh, is what is going to help when it comes to a degree doctor how should a student choose what he is eligible to do uh, it's not about eligibility it's it's just you know uh, how how do you choose your uh, profession how do you choose your field i think it it should be based on two factors one thing is about your your skills your capacity your competencies and your liking whether you like something if you are passionate about something choose that particular area that is where you're going to do well in my case i did medicine but i, I was not passionate about medicine but then i switched my career uh, and became an it professional because that is where i my my passion was Uh, entrepreneur uh, so i learned business and it because that was, that's my passion so that's one factor the second factor is you should look at also the opportunities as you say now we talked about in the 90s we saw a uh, uh, booming it industry that is that is an opportunity so youngsters should look at what are the uh, demanding areas where the new opportunities will come ask from your you know uh, if you have elder brothers or sisters ask from them right see, uh, talk to the people if you have relatives in other countries then you will see the trends trends new trends in your perspective what are the trends that you see doctor uh, uh, you know engineering technology uh, it uh, is going to be the uh, the future a lot of lot of uh, you know merging of technologies like you know, we we see a lot of hybrid things today so it has to blend with medicine it has to blend with marketing it has to blend with uh, finance uh, engineering has to blend with technology uh, if you if it comes to manufacturing automation how you get that is you know mechanical engineering plus automation so therefore you know merging of industries uh, is what's going to happen in future for sri lanka i think there are two main industries which you can focus on one is tourism the other one is uh, it 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 will be uh, the ones that can change the landscape of this country uh, if you can achieve sustainable development these are the two fields for two in my opinion yeah. uh, is it good to work while studying doctor because uh, you personally you 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 were teaching well while you, yeah, yeah you undergraduate that's that's, that's a big uh, 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 you know opportunity for you because otherwise you don't know what the uh, working environment is like until you fully qualify and start looking for a job today actually when, they, when you work and learn you you have an idea of you know getting the working environment problems and going uh, you know learn 
that from the education system and then apply what you learn back in the organization so it will it will be a you know continuous improvement of yourself today we see like uh, students enter the local university and they come out after good 5 years yeah. but uh, they start up with a basic salary after 5 years yeah. but students uh, who's who get into the i'm not i'm right. not supporting yeah. the private education yeah. but uh, we see them like far way better than performing better than the other students who are educating in the local universities yeah. but uh, how how should they manage this doubt like you know that, to, that is because the up. people do not focus on example some of the uh, you know students who go study at state universities they don't look at soft skills they don't look at your marketing skills today actually everybody need uh, marketing and sales uh, skills uh, even if you become a doctor you need that because patient care is all about customer uh, service so you have to change your mindset you know anyone whether you are state university or private university if you have the mindset you can look for a job and start with some job uh, some people only want to you know if you if you do engineering you will not start anywhere else other than uh, an engineer but i think that con that mindset is wrong you will start as a technician you will become an engineer some day but you start as a technician that's my uh, next question actually yeah. uh the the career yeah people choose their careers yeah. like uh it's it's a bit complicated for themselves yeah. like uh, they they stuck they get stuck somewhere yeah. so what is your advice in choosing careers uh, uh that's, that's that's something i i also earlier also st uh, stressed a little bit about yes. so choose your career based on your passion and based on the opportunities so think what what is demanding think about your skills talents and passion and then choose your field and also another important thing is don't hesitate to change your field you know in developed countries people change their profession uh, even uh, in the late uh, 40s even in the 50s they change their profession so why why not change it's comfortable for example my sister was a lawyer here she migrated she can't practice as a lawyer so she has uh, done nursing now so she is going to be a nurse doctor is the it knowledge given to local students uh, sufficient enough uh, to to go hand in hand with the competitive world uh, i don't think so because you now if you look at our education system now it training uh, it uh, it learning starts only at uh, in year 9 which is too late so we should start it if you can start it from kindergarten that is why we should look at and also we should we should uh, give them in it also the core is coding and not about you know what is what are the solutions available what systems are available we teach them those things you no know, let's talk a bit make, about more yeah if you want to make a change in it field you need to know for example what i am today uh, of it is because of my coding skills if any new language comes i can learn that uh, in very short period of time That's because amazing. that is because my foundation is very good right so today actually a lot of people who are studying it they they think that coding is not needed for them because they are thinking about a particular job and only try to acquire the skills needed for that particular job right but you know core of it is all on code it's all systems all the back of every system is code so without learning coding how can you be a successful it practitioner so that's the basic that is the basic everyone must learn it i think and also you must learn if you can give that knowledge and in 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 early childhood they will become uh, you know people like uh, mark zuckerberg who can you know come up with any new ideas that's uh, uh, that's not uh, it's something uh, practical right it's, yeah, it's, it's practical 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 and and when you have that strong foundation you have that adaptability you have that flexibility to change according to the situation do you think uh, the kid uh, who is 6 year old uh, will adopt to this very fast no there are very interesting tools which uh, you know uh, which can use uh, animations and which can use graphics and teach them these skills it doesn't need to be writing uh, you know it's like learning center. a new language yeah, yeah. it's, it's new ways of learning computer basic uh, programming skills so doctor your advice to the parents who are watching game changers uh, to to like educate the kids with it i think now the little bit of you know change happening in the international schools the curriculum there are proposals in in the government schools also but i don't know how fast they will be uh, implemented 
But my message is, if, if parents see, uh, you know, children have a passion for IT, uh, you know, give them as much as access to uh, devices, electronics, components, let them play with it. Let them play with it. There are actually now even, even new, new tools, for example, uh, Lego kind of brands have uh, some, uh, 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 you know, playing game uh, tool, tool sets which can teach you basics of robotics. Right. So, uh, uh, children will play with that, but what they're learning is science and technology while playing. So, give them that experience. Give them, give them that experience. If you can find some, I mean, if you search e on uh, internet, eBay, you will find, you cannot purchase them online and give them exposure to these things. Doctor, uh, what does, uh, we, we had a long chat, uh, what does uh, your future hold in terms of business? Any any new uh, any yeah. good news coming to our people yeah. in Sri Lanka? New things actually. Uh, we have a plan to start a very good uh, a big international school, a little outside Colombo, close to Katnaika. Uh, we want to start an international school where, where we will try to bring international students and then we'll give a learning experience to the Sri Lankan students, a real international learning experience at a uh, at the school age. Uh, like, why in Katnaika? No, because in Colombo it's very congested, you know, traffic. Now we have highway access uh, there, so people should, you know, change their mindset. You know, all big school doesn't need to be in her, your business hub. Colombo is a business hub. You have a lot of traffic, air pollution, and all that. So we want to take it out and give them in a more greener uh, environment uh, with all sports facilities and everything. Doctor, your message uh, to the youth in Sri Lanka. Yes, actually, uh, what what I'm what I have to tell you is that as youngsters, you truly don't know your potential. That is the problem that you have. Everyone underestimate uh, themselves. But what I have to tell you is that Sri Lankan youth is very talented. They are capable, but they are not using these talents to the ultimate uh, potential. So explore yourself. Find out about yourself. Find out about your talents and live with your passion and chase uh, your dreams then you will become successful citizen and useful citizens for the country. That's interesting. Uh, your message to our 21 million people out there in Sri Lanka? Yeah, you know, uh, I, uh, citizens of this country, most of the people think that, uh, you know, change should be done by someone else. No, change should start within yourself. You change, you make at least a little change in your household. Uh, as a professional, you make a little change in your industry, uh, then this country will change. We can't wait till other people develop this country. We, as citizens of this country, we need to develop it. So change should start from yourself. You change your uh, life, your family, the country will change and country will move forward. Be the change the country will change, says Dr. Dayan Rajapaksha founder, managing director, ESOFT Group. Thank you very much, Doctor, for sharing your valuable time here with us. We wish you all the very best with your future endeavors. Uh, we'll be back next week with another intense, exciting episode on the Game Changers. Till then, goodbye.